If you are travelling on the recently constructed Northern Distributor Road around where Norwich City's airport is located, a group of aircraft suddenly appears at one point perched on the side of the embankment. Placed between the Norwich International Airport and the small village of Horsham St Faith is an independently run collection of military and civilian aircraft which make up the City of Norwich Aviation Museum. As a resident of Norwich myself, this air museum is easily within reach for me, so let's explore what the museum has to offer. On entering through the visitors centre, there is then the main display hall which holds the nose sections of a replica World War II Westland Whirlwind and an ex-RAF Hawker Hunter along with a complete US Army Jeep. There are also rows of display cases, each focusing on different aviation subjects from dioramas from World War II to a collection of scale models that served with the US Air Force at the base of RAF Sculthorpe. Local aviation history is the main subject matter for the displays, with a separate hall dedicated to the Aircraft of 100 group and some rather nice 148 scale model examples of RAF heavy bombers. As well as a vast collection of scale models, there is also a good selection of aviation artefacts and remains, including the gun turret from a consolidated B-24 Liberator. This aircraft of the US Army Air Force conducted operations during World War II from many bases around Norfolk. Above you, every available space of this hall is well used, as there are some larger scale models of aircraft such as the Dornier 17 flying above. One of the display halls here at the museum is dedicated to RAF Coltishall, which is just a short distance away from the city of Norwich. There is loads of information and pictures here, which details the history from when the base was formed in 1939 up until when it became the last home of the RAF Jackler. The photographs from the heyday of this airbase go back to a happier time before the site was sold for the construction of a prison. On leaving the main display hall, the aircraft exhibited can be found outside, with the museum grounds being stretched along the side of the main road. The first aircraft that drew my attention was an example of the English Electric Lightning, one of Britain's most famous jet aircraft designed during the post-war period. The example is actually an ex-Saudi Air Force aircraft, so the museum has kept its origins alive with one side of the aircraft retaining these national markings. On the opposite side, however, the Lightning has been painted in the bold colours of Royal Air Force's 74 Tiger Squadron. This RAF squadron was based for many years at nearby RAF Coltishall, so as the Tigers have a close link to Norfolk, it is not surprising to find out that the Lightning is not the only aircraft on display to wear these markings. Another of the squadron's aircraft is represented by the museum's Hawker Hunter, a classic jet aircraft of the 1950s that preceded the Lightning in service with this squadron. There is also a further complete example of this aircraft on display at the other side of the museum grounds with this Hunter being a photo reconnaissance version in 79 squadron markings. Serving alongside the Hunters in RAF service during the 1950s was the Gloucester Meteor. This aircraft is painted with the colourful tail markings of 245 squadron, and the example came to the museum after having served as a gate guard at RAF Nietzscheed. The final remaining RAF fast jet at the museum is the Sepikat Jaguar GR1. This aircraft really does have a strong link to the surrounding area, as up until 2005, Jaguars were based at RAF Coltishall. Painted in the older style grey and green camouflage, this Jaguar represents a 54 Squadron aircraft, which was one of the last two squadrons to be based at Coltishall before the type's retirement and the closure of the airbase. If you have more time around Norwich itself, by the way, another complete Jaguar can be seen on a plinth outside the City Council building. 
Although it is a relatively small air museum, this does not stop it from displaying some pretty large aircraft. A relatively common sight in UK air museums is the large Avro Vulcan, one of the RAF's famous V-bomber aircraft. This Vulcan arrived at the airport for display purposes after the type was retired from service in 1983. Not as common at air museums is another large RAF type, in the form of a British Aerospace Nimrod Maritime Patrol aircraft. When the Nimrod left RAF service in 2010, air museums bid to preserve the surviving airframes, and one found its way to the museum after touching down at Norwich Airport. Both of these aircraft are regularly open to visitors for a fee, so the cockpits can be viewed up close. The last British military jet aircraft on display at the museum is a British Aerospace Harrier T4 dual seat trainer. Whenever I've been to the Air Museum here before, I've always noticed this Harrier, but it's always been in a very dilapidated state, so it's good to see on my visit here today, it's in one piece. Finished in raw navy markings, the tail of this aircraft looks like it belongs to an RAF Harrier GR3, making this something of a Frankenstein's monster of an aircraft. As well as the always popular military aircraft, the museum also holds a fairly good lineup of civilian aircraft, including a Handley Page Herald, a Fokker F-27 Friendship, and an Avro RJ-85. The two twin-engine transport aircraft both served in the freight role, and were regular visitors to Norwich Airport. A further not-so-complete example of the Fokker Friendship is tucked away further along the museum grounds, though this is missing its wings and tailplane. The Avro RJ85 is the museum's most recent addition, and during the pandemic it was airlifted by crane across the road from the airport grounds where it had been residing before being allocated to the collection. The aircraft is currently stripped of its engines, and a lot of work is going on to restore the aircraft. To round off the collection of aircraft outside, there are three further small civilian aircraft, and two foreign-built military jet aircraft. One of these is an American Lockheed T-33 Shooting Star painted in US Air Force markings, and the other is a French-built Dassault Mystere 4. Both of these aircraft were picked up by the museum from surplus supplies, and a number of air museums around the UK seem to have acquired their own examples of these two military aircraft types. The French Dassault Mystere is in bare metal, which surprisingly enough is exactly as I remember it from my last visit, so this should really be given some nice markings to finish it off properly for display. Sometimes it is only just a small part of the aircraft that can be saved, when types are retired from active service and assigned to the scrapyard. As well as the complete airframes outside, there is also a number of cockpit sections from various RAF aircraft, including two Jaguar cockpits, a cockpit from a Donald Douglas Phantom, and a Blackburn Buccaneer. Whilst it definitely would have been nicer to see the whole aircraft still intact, Saving something from it is better than nothing. Outside on show there are the forward sections of two BAC Cambras and a Gloucester Meteor Nightfire. The Cambra B2 with its distinctive bubble domed canopy and glazed nose cone had the crew access door open, so a view inside the cockpit could be seen. There is also one other cockpit lurking outside in a very beaten up state which can be identified as belonging to a Hunter T7. Now that is going to take some serious restoration effort. Norfolk has had a long history of military and civilian aviation, and the City of Norwich Air Museum aims to preserve as much of this local history as possible. Unlike many other air museums, 
This one has no railings or areas marked off around the aircraft on display, so you can get as close as you like to the airframes. You can also play a game near the sheds around the gate of guessing what is garden equipment and what are parts of aircraft. At the time this video was filmed, the pandemic was still around, but ever since March of 2020 when the first lockdowns were announced, airliners that could no longer be used for their usual routes suddenly started gathering around the Norwich Airport perimeter. Depending on how far in the future this video is being watched, they may all be gone now, but for quite a while it was like there was an extra air museum directly on the other side of the road, with a whole collection of civilian airliners. I probably would have got in trouble with the Norwich City Airport staff though if I tried exploring that one. If you have enjoyed this video then please consider giving it a like and following my channel for more. I have many more air museums from around the world and many other historical places to come. So until next time, see you around.